Good morning. I'm Deborah Lindsay, the Interim Senior Minister of Plymouth Church. We are worshiping at home this morning. Jim Riggs, Leslie Soleil, and I are all doing our parts from our own homes in uh, even more uh, cooperation with the governor's order to uh, stay at home in Ohio. We know that you're doing that to the degree that you're able, and we are too. I am coming to you this morning from my kitchen and sitting in my favorite chair. And that's not all bad as much as I would love to be seeing you this morning. And true confessions, I do actually have my coffee right here, as I suspect you do too. We, uh, we are all adapting in ways that we can to this different time. But you know, it's still Sunday morning and we are still Plymouth Church. We are church in a different way right now. We will return to being church together in our beautiful sanctuary. For now, we are church in this way and so grateful for technology that it can connect us in so many ways. I wanna remind you to grab a candle in just a minute. We are going to light a candle as we enter into a spirit of worship. First, I wanna give you some announcements because it wouldn't be church without announcements, right? So as I said, we're all worshiping together from home this morning. I want to remind you that the work of the church and the financial needs of the church continue. You are all so generous, and I'm going to remind you that you can donate online. It's very easy. You can also text to give, and so please keep that in mind as you navigate these days. There are lots of things going on during the week. A Bible study is on Monday nights, and we are doing that via Zoom. If you'd like to participate, email me. I'll send you the link. Leslie Zelay is doing a craft for children every Wednesday morning, and that's at 10 o'clock on Facebook. There aren't too many things you can count on these days, but you can count on Leslie at 10 on Wednesday morning on Facebook with something for the kids to do. You can also count on Jim Riggs on Thursday nights. He has begun a Bible study with the choir during the normal time of choir practice, but you are all invited. So just email Jim, get the link, and uh, you can participate in that as well. The folks who have done Zoom, who've never done it before, are telling us that it's very easy and it doesn't take long to get the hang of it. So uh, please join us and participate as you can. So now it's time to enter into a spirit of worship. One of the ways that we are reminded of God's presence is by the lighting of a candle as we were also reminded of God's presence by the ringing of the bells at the beginning of the service. So if you would light the candle in your home, remembering that God is always present, God is always near, and we are always together as we enter into a spirit of worship. Good morning and welcome to worship from our home to yours. We're gonna begin our time together this morning singing a stanza from the familiar hymn, How Firm a Foundation. The stanza is, Fear not, I am with you, O oh, be not dismayed. The words will appear across your screen, and we will sing through that three times. Fear not, I am with you, O oh, be not dismayed. For I am your God, I will still give you aid. I'll strengthen you, help you, and cause you to stand. Upheld by my gracious, omnipotent hand. Fear not, I am with you, oh be not dismayed, for I am your God, I will still give you aid, I'll strengthen you, help you, and cause you to stand, upheld by my gracious omnipotent hand. Fear not, I am with you, oh be not dismayed, for I am your God, I will still give you aid, 
I'll strengthen you, help you, and cause you to stand upheld by my gracious, omnipotent hand. Good morning, friends. It is time for our children's message. We are going to continue working on our Holy Week wreath. This wreath is telling the story of Holy Week, which we are preparing for and is coming up quickly, but we will have it ready for Easter. So let's review the parts that we've put in so far. We started with Palm Sunday, where Jesus rode into Jerusalem. That Thursday, on Maundy Thursday, he had his last supper with his uh, disciples, and he broke bread and drank wine and commanded us to do this in remembrance of him. So we have some wheat to remind us of the bread, and we have the grapes to remind us of the wine. Now, if you remember, the next day is called Good Friday, but that was actually a very sad day because that is the day that uh, Jesus died on the cross. But the good news is that is not the end of the story. We have more to this wreath. So the next part that we are going to add today is about the tomb. And I have a rock here for our tomb because back in those times, they buried people in like caves and they could roll big rocks in front of them. And the rulers wanted to make sure that nobody disturbed Jesus's body. So they put a big rock in front of it and they put some guards there. So after Jesus' body was laid to rest, they put a big rock in front, and his disciples were, of course, very sad. But some of them still had faith that there was more to this story, that there was more that Jesus had prophesied was to come, and they were waiting, and they were believing, and they were having faith. Um, as you can see, I got this rock at a craft store, and it already has faith written on it because I thought that was a good reminder um, to make us think about things that... We can't always see, but we still believe, right? Things like love, things like faith. Um, we can't see them, but we can still feel them and we can still believe in them. So friends, don't give up on this story and Jesus's story because there is more to come. And we're going to hear how the story ends on Easter. I'm sure you know what happens on Easter. So we're going to hear more about it next week in our children's message. Until then, have a good week. Our text this morning is from the book of Psalms, Psalm 130. This is known as a text, uh, a psalm of lament, but also a psalm of ascent. Hear these words. Out of the depths, I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in God's word, I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for morning, more than those who watch for morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with God there is great power to redeem. It is God who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. And then just a portion, the very big first part of the psalm from the message says it a bit differently. God the bottom has fallen out of my life. Lord, hear my cry for help. Listen hard. Open your ears. Listen to my cries for mercy. Let us pray. Holy One, we know that you are still speaking. Help us to hear these words as fresh and new and for us today. Amen. Psalm 130 is uh, in the lectionary for today, but I'm really struck by how appropriate it is for this time that we're in. 
You know, there are times in life when one of the most holy, sacred, and generous things you can do is wait. We wait with a friend whose spouse is in surgery. We wait for the diagnosis. We wait for the news. We wait for the phone call that says, I'm home, safe and sound. We wait for the test results. The sermon title today is Just Be Imaginative. It's kind of ironic, really, given that when I did my Lenten sermon planning way back in early February, uh, we did not imagine that we would all be worshiping from home on this Sunday. The plan was, it was in a chart and everything, the plan was to focus on a story from the book of Ezekiel about dry bones. You might even remember the song from when you were a kid, Dem Bones, Dem Bones, Dem Dry Bones. Well, that story is not so much about dry bones as it is about God breathing the breath of life into those bones. It is a story full of opportunity for imagining, thus the title, Just Be Imaginative. It is a good time in human history to remember that God is always, always blowing the breath of life into us in ways that we might be aware of and ways that we're not aware of. Today we're listening together to a psalm, as I said, a psalm of lament, but also considered part of a group of songs of ascent. The Hebrew Bible scholar Howard Brueggemann says that the psalms express all of the rawness and raggedness of life. How many of us have felt a little raw and ragged over the last few weeks? Maybe that's how you're feeling today. Whatever the depths this person is writing about, they are crying out to God. They are saying, listen to me, listen to me. And then after that pleading, after that expressing of sorrow, there is this expectation that God is present, God is listening, and God will respond in some way. The writer waits with hope. By the way, it's equally important to pay attention to what the psalm does not say. It does not say, be patient. It does say, wait. It does not say, be patient. We are waiting for the worst of the pandemic to pass. We are waiting to flatten the curve. How many times have you heard that expression lately? Doctors and nurses and first responders and medical professionals of all kinds are waiting for masks and gloves and the, the equipment they need to carry out their job. Grandparents are waiting for the day when they can hug their children again. People who've been laid off from their jobs are waiting to get back to work, waiting to end this time of anxiety about providing for themselves and their families. Let's be honest, a lot of parents are waiting for the day when their children can go back to school and back to their teachers for their learning. And some folks are just waiting for a phone call, waiting for a phone call to break through the isolation and the loneliness of this time. We are all waiting for the pandemic to be over. We are waiting for Easter in more ways than one. And I don't know about you, but I am awfully glad that this Psalm does not ask us to be patient in our waiting. I'm always reminded of an old comic by Charles Schultz. Remember the Peanuts comics? I think in this comic, it was Lucy who was saying, dear God, give me patience and hurry up. <laughs> I know that feeling. But there is nothing about patience in Psalm 130, only waiting. It speaks to waiting with confidence in God, and not just confidence, but an expectation, a hope that God is there and God will be present. Now, let me give you a little bit of background about this psalm in particular and all of the psalms of ascent was most likely a song sung by pilgrims going to Israel. And they might've been traveling in a small group with family or they might've been traveling even alone. 
And so, you know, Jerusalem was on a hill. And so they are literally ascending, going up the hill to reach their point of pilgrimage. You can kind of imagine the scene. They start out alone or with a small group of family. And as they get closer to Jerusalem, the city on the hill, other pilgrims join them and they gather around and the crowd grows bigger. That's what we see in Psalm 130. It starts out with one voice and it moves on to a group perspective. The, the pivot happens from my soul waits for the Lord to, oh, Israel, the group, oh, Israel, hope in the Lord. The psalm moves from me to us and our communal desires and hopes and longings. And yes, even our communal lament. The hope and the expectation are there, but now we're in it together. We should mention that this psalm, the psalmist wonders about sin, iniquities is the word that's used here, wrongdoing. The psalm expresses a view that was very common in antiquity, would have been common to the writer, and is common in some traditions today, that uh, bad things happen because somebody did something wrong. Sin. Now let us be very clear. Make no mistake. Suffering is not a punishment from God. It is not some kind of payment for wrongdoing demanded by God. That's just bad theology. It may be the result or the consequence of an action. Drive too fast and you might cause a wreck, but it is not punishment. Don't stop there, though. Don't, don't stop reading. Keep reading. Keep listening, because even the psalmist comes around to a different point of view. The psalmist says, no, that could not possibly be the case, because God forgives everything. All is forgiven, and God is present in those depths, present with us in that suffering, right beside us, like this candle is beside me on the most difficult of days. There is a chapel in Jerusalem. It's in the Hadassah Hospital. It's a bit of a tourist attraction because it has these gorgeous stained glass windows that were designed by Marc Chagall. And the stained glass windows are up in this domed ceiling. So you actually look up to see them. But when you look down, you see that just below the windows is a kind of a carved out space, actually a dip in the floor. And that's where the pulpit sits in this chapel. The designers of the chapel made it that way as a, a way of reflecting the belief that all prayer should be offered out of the depths. So we stand in the depths as we look up at those glorious stained glass windows designed by Marc Chagall. So going forward this week, I hope you'll hope, hold this psalm close. I hope you will, in moments of gratitude and moments of, whether it's inconvenience or deep worry and despair, I hope you will remember those words, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in God's word, I hope. May it be so for you. Amen. We are now going to enter a time of prayer. You can feel free to leave your prayer requests in the comments section and let us be mindful of each other as we pray for these concerns. Something I am doing during this time of Lent is I am doing pray in color. I have been making my own prayer requests on this tree with leaves and coloring them in. Today, you might want to take a blank piece of paper and write the name of a person or a concern and put that in the center of the piece of paper and just doodle and draw around it and meditate on that person or situation. As we enter this time of prayer, 
Let us be reflective as we listen to some music and center ourselves and lift our prayers up to God. we lift these prayers up to you this day. In your name we pray. Amen. I hope you felt some sense of comfort and connection in our worship service today. And one more reminder, if you need anything at all, if you need food, if you need some other kind of assistance, there are individuals in our congregation who have offered to help anyone who needs it. So please, please reach out to us and let us know. Uh, we are ready to help, but we need to know that you need that help. And so please let us know if you need anything. We are working very hard to stay connected to you, and my hope is that you will uh, stay connected to us as well. So may God bless you and keep you. May God shine God's face upon you and give you peace today and forever. Amen. As we close our service today, let us join our voices in singing, Go Forth, O People of God. Go forth, O people of God. Go forth, O people of God. A new love and a new promise, O creation is reborn. Oh, people.